Amen. Amen. Just real quick, um, we're going to be starting some things for our our youth pretty soon, our teenage crowd, because uh, we haven't done that yet, but we want to we wanna expand what we're doing here and give them something to connect with and get them together. And, um, and uh, I just think that we need to really invest in the, in the teenagers and the youth of our culture, don't you? Yes. Last week, Jeff Grinnell, um, he spoke here, and what he does is he goes from church to church and helps them develop youth ministries that, that, have, that have maximum impact. And that's kind of his job. Not only is he an evangelist, but he goes and speaks into churches' lives and pastors' lives to help them develop youth ministries, how we can effectively um, reach the youth culture. And in fact, a cool fact, anybody here of um, Hillsong Church in New York? His son just became last week a youth pastor at that church. So um, he's um, raising up all his kids are in ministry, and uh, they're pastors of, uh, in some, so, of some sort, of some caliber, but um, that's his passion. We're so glad that he was able to be here and be able to invest in his ministry. He was able to invest in us, and I believe that he really released a word of God for our church. Amen? Amen. 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 If you missed it last week, go, on, go online, and, uh, and, and it's, it's, it's on our website. If you miss any messages, church180.org, and you can, you can listen to any of our past messages. You know, The Good Life, we're on week three of the Good Life message series, and uh, it's been a great time. On week one, we talked about less is more. We talked about how, how, how um, it's better to have little with tranquility, one hand with tranquility, than a lot with a lot of, a lot of turmoil. We'd rather have a little and, 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 and with the blessing of God on it instead of a lot that, that gives us turmoil and trouble. We'll, then we talked about debt is bad, how God desires for us to be debt-free. If we're like most people in this room, most of us probably have experienced debt in some way, shape, or form. But man, but I believe that God can, with God's help, with God's blessing, with our discipline, living according to God's word, that we can see a life that's debt-free. Anybody? I believe that we can. I believe that we can. And today we're going to be talking about giving is good. Less is more, debt is bad, and giving is good. we got one more week of this series, and we just believe that God is going to speak to us through his word. I mean, we all want the good life, don't we? We do. And for everybody, it looks a little bit different. What that looks like looks different for all of us. For some of us, it's to have a nice car, a high-paying job, and, and a, to, to have a, a nice house and be able to be comfortable and have all the luxuries that, that, we, that we want. It looks a lot different to a lot of us. Or achieving the American dream. And I believe that God wants us blessed. He wants us blessed. But what he doesn't want is he doesn't want us stressed and in debt. I believe that God wants us free to be able to be a blessing to this world around us, and he wants to be able to be a blessing in us and through us. Imagine what it would be if we could just be a blessing to the people around us, that we're, we're so freed up and blessed by God that, that we, can, we see a need and we can meet it. Yeah? Imagine a life like that. And I believe that, 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 that there's a place that we can go to. There's a place that God can bring us to if we are good stewards of what he's given us. If we, we have a plan, we work through the plan, live according to God's word, and we can see this progress in our lives. See, God wants us to be faithful stewards. His ultimate plan isn't for us to have a whole bunch of stuff that takes over our lives and we consume and consume and consume. His plan for us is to have an intimate relationship with him where we are able to be blessed, to be a blessing to the world around us, to ultimately, ultimately fulfill our God-given destiny. And often I wonder if we're missing it, getting caught up with all the stuff that's around us. Stuff that consumes our life, doesn't it? It does. We have so much stuff, and we've got to work harder and harder to pay off the stuff that we've got, and we see more stuff, and we, we want to buy it, so we've got to work harder and harder and harder, and we're, we're working our lives away for, for what? Stuff. But I believe that God has something better for us. I believe that God wants us blessed and not stressed and going deeper in debt. And in his word, he gives us sound financial advice that leads to blessing in God's good life. It's a good life when we can be a blessing to others. It's a good life when we, when we, can, we can feed the, the hunger, we can clothe those who are in need, where we can be a blessing to the kingdom of God. It's a good life 
where we can selfishly, selfishly, selflessly give to other people. That's the good life. But our culture has told us that the good life is me, 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 me. The more stuff I get, the better off I am, the bigger house that I have, the, the nicer car that I get. And there's nothing wrong with that stuff. It really isn't. But it's when the stuff has us. Stuff isn't bad. Money's not bad. Actually, money is a tool that God uses. It's not good or bad. And one of the most commonly misquoted scriptures is this. People say, money is the root of all evil. Let's correct that. The love of money is the root of all evil. Money's not either good or bad, but it's a tool that we can use for good or for bad. Money can be a huge blessing, or at the same time, it could be a huge curse. But God wants to teach us in his word how to, how to steward the money, the resources. Steward means that we manage something that isn't ours. Everything that we have is God's, Right? So we are good stewards with what he has given us. And we learn through biblical principles how we can manage what God has given us in this world. And today what I want to do is I want to talk to you. We talked about living less is more, getting all the, the clutter in our life, those things, the Lord, the, those things that, are, that, are, that are consuming our lives, all the stuff, the consumerism of this, of this age. We talked about that. We talked about debt is bad. We, we, and today we're going to be talking about giving is good. I want to talk to you today specifically about releasing God's blessing on your finances. You want your finances blessed, don't you? We want God to be able to work with what he has given us. We want him to be able to multiply what he's given us. We want God to be able to use what he's given us for his glory, to see people's lives change, to see the, the kingdom of God move forward to, so that we can be a, a, a huge di- make a huge difference in, in this world. And, uh, and I want to challenge you today not to be just, the Bible says, to, not to just to be the hearers of the word, deceiving yourselves, but be doers of the word. And this is an easy message for many of us to, to maybe brush off, but I challenge you to listen and to hear what God is saying through scripture and through his word today. Amen? Amen. So week three of the Good Life series, Giving is Good. This message has a a potential to impact your life, I believe, in a significant way. Acts 20, 35, you'll turn there with me. If you've got your Bible or if you've got your Bible app on your phone, you can, you can go to Version. download that. I encourage you. It's got a lot of Bible reading plans, and I use it to, to read Scripture. And, um, and you can, it can be a, kind of your carry-along Bible. You know, when you're waiting at the doctor's office, just whip it out, read some of God's Word, finish up your devotional plan, and a um, whole lot of cool tools there. So I encourage you. So we're going to be reading out of Acts chapter 20. Verse 35, you should remember the words of the Lord Jesus, that it's more blessed to give than it is to receive. It's more blessed to give than it is to receive. I mean, it's a blessing to receive, isn't it? I mean, when you're really in need and when you really need something, it really is a blessing to receive, isn't it? There's been times in my life where it was a huge blessing to receive, but but what the Bible's saying here, that it's even more blessed to give. Think about it. I've never heard any emotionally, any 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 um, emotional consuming stories, have you? Where people have consumed and got and got and got and got and got, just just consuming and having emotional stories about that. I've heard emotional stories when people's needs were met. Or when people gave to meet a need, and they're very, very emotional. No one ever said, man, when, when I just busted through those doors on Black Friday and plowed people over, man, tears were coming out of my eyes. It was so meaningful. Or, or, or when I got that flat screen TV, man, it was like I was in heaven. I felt so close to God. When I got my first iPhone, I could really sense the power and the presence of God. Oh, man. Ladies, when you got your first coach purse, oh my goodness, you heard angels sing. You don't hear stories like that. But you do hear stories about when we give, people's lives are able to be changed. I mean, I can, I can recall sometimes like when a, when, 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 when a mom, that who, uh, um, when we were able to help a mom who couldn't feed her children, we were able to put food on their table so that they can eat. That 
is an emotional experience. That is more blessed to give than to receive. When, when going, going to other, other countries, I remember one experience when, 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 we, when we were leaving, we were just giving the, the clothes off our back and the shoes off our feet to the people that were leaving behind. It was more blessed to give than it was to receive. And they had done so much for us, but they had so little. One man that I remember, we were in Mexico. We were in a resort area. We're in a very poor village. An older gentleman, he managed, his, his sandals wore out, and he managed to make a pair of sandals out of a tire. And it was, you know, he was a good guy. He was working really hard along with us. We are actually building a church is what we were doing. But at the end of our trip, I remember my friend bought him a brand new pair of leather sandals, really nice, and gave them to this older gentleman. And the tears that came down his eyes and tears that came down my friend's eyes because he was able to be a blessing. Because it really is more blessed to give than it is to receive, isn't it? But in this culture of consumerism, materialism, and, and debt, and all this stuff, we, 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 we lose sight that how blessed it really is to give. But instead, instead of the blessing of giving, we want to consume and get, and, and me, and I'm going to save it for me, and I'm going to take what I can get and just, just store it away so that I always have it. You see, when we give, we impact somebody's life. When we give, people's lives are changed. And we see that here right now in Church 180. I talked to you about some, some opportunities that I've seen and I've had in the past to impact people's lives through giving. But today at Church 180, because of your giving, I'm going to tell you something. This, 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 this year alone, 17 people have received Christ. That's because of your giving. Last week, because of your giving, eight people were able to be water baptized. Did you know that? Let me give you some statistics from January 1, 2015 on. Before then, we launched a couple of, of this church a couple of months before this. But this is when we really keep in track of some really clear records. Because of your giving, since January 2015, 67 people have come to know Jesus Christ through Church 180. <laughs> 23 people have been water baptized. I think that's great. <laughs> Marriages are saved, bodies are healed, and people have, have addictions broken. We've seen God do the miraculous. You know, we see God work during the week, not just on Sundays, but when we're ministering to people during the week. The work of the church, seeing miracles take place, seeing people's sicknesses just instantly healed. We've seen it. Why? Because of you, because you're able to, you're, because of your giving, we're able to see people's lives really change and have an impact. So that those far from God can experience him. 2 Corinthians 9.11 says this, And you will be enriched in every way, so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. People's lives are changed, and it's giving glory to God. Those, 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 those souls that are saved, those people who are baptized, those people who are, who are seeing God move in their life, it, it, it brings out from within us glory to God and, and thankfulness to him because of what he has done in our life. You know, if, if, if it's, it's more blessed to give than to receive, I wonder, I wonder, why don't we give more? If it really is more blessed to give than to receive, why don't we look for more opportunities to give? Why don't we look for more opportunities in our neighborhoods or, or, or in our communities? Or why don't we look for more opportunities in, in, in the body of Christ or look for more opportunities with the people in our family? Why don't we look for more opportunities to give? If it really is, if we really believe this, why don't we give more? And why do we freak out so much? <laughs> tell you why sometimes we freak out about giving and sometimes when the pastor's talking about money i'll tell you something jesus i say this a lot jesus talked about money more than heaven and hell combined because you know what it has it it, it touches every part of your life think of a part of your life that money doesn't touch 
You go, to, you, go, you, go, you, go, you raise your kids, it takes money. You go buy groceries, it takes money. You pay your car payment, you pay your house payment. And you, you do everything, and money touches it some way. And he knew that the stronghold, the possible stronghold that it could have on our life, and, and the possibility of that barrier in our relationship with him because of the love of money. But I'll tell you why sometimes we freak out when it comes to giving. And we want to give, don't we? We want to be generous. We want to be a blessing. But sometimes it's because we're, maybe we're struggling financially and we're freaking out. Like, I don't know if I can do that. Maybe it's because this message has been abused by some people. So when we hear this, our guard goes automatically up. Somebody's abused this, and, and here's another preacher talking about money, and he, all he wants is money, 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 money. Or maybe it's just because we have a scarcity mindset. We believe that there's just not enough. Everything that I get, I've got a, I've, I've got a limited amount available. I've got to protect what I have, you know, and, and, and it, it's fear-based, and we don't believe that, that God can bless us. We don't believe that, that God can provide for all of our needs, you know, but, but what we need to have instead of a scarcity mindset is an abundance mindset where we believe that God has it all. God can give more. God can help me be a blessing to the people around me. When I give, God blesses me. Because you see, when you, when, when you give, you will be a blessing. And when you give, you will be blessed. Any amens in this church today? Amen, amen, amen. Proverbs 11, 24, 25 says in the message version of the Bible, it says this. I'm talking to you about the Bible today. It says the, the world of the generous gets larger and larger. But the world of the stingy gets smaller and smaller. But the one who blesses others is abundantly blessed. So I would say, with no doubt in my heart, that giving is good. Giving is good. Today I want to talk to you about three spiritual keys to financial blessing. You can write them down if you're taking notes. First key to, fi- to, to, to financial, the spiritual key to, fi- to financial blessing is to trust God with the tithe. That's where it all begins. This is where it all begins. And we've got testimony after testimony in this church of, of, of people just testing God in this and seeing God's faithfulness. It's a, it comes from this, this Hebrew word, the tithe. This a Hebrew word called ma'asar, meaning one-tenth. Leviticus 27.30 says, One-tenth of the produce of the land, whether grain from the fields or fruit from the trees, belong to the Lord and, and must, be, must be set apart to Him as holy. It's first. It's set apart. It's holy, the Bible says. There's something special about the first 10%. God says it's holy, that it's set apart, and that it belongs to to God. Actually, if you want to get real technical, it's not giving, it's returning. Amen. We're returning to God what's already his. He says, it is mine. Set it apart. It's holy. When you get paid, set it apart. It's holy. It's not yours. I think it's awesome that God, God it's all God's and it gives us 90% to live off. See, I'd rather have 90% blessed by God then 100%, that's not. And it always amazes me how 90% blessed by God always goes further. Somebody give me an amen on this because that goes 100%. That goes further than 100% ever will. So many people can testify to this because of God's blessing. Malachi 3, 8 through 10 says, Will a man rob God? Yet you're robbing me. And you say, but, but how am I robbing you? How have we robbed you? In tithes and in offerings. You're cursed with a curse for you're robbing me. And the whole nation of you, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse so that there may be food in my house. And test me now in this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such a blessing until it overflows. See, this is the one place that, that God gives us permission to test him. To test him. Because we worship God with our first and our best, and he promises to bless the rest. We give him the first hours of the first day of the week, right? We're here, right? As an act of worship, we give him the the first part of our income. We give him the first part of our day and devotions and prayer. 
And if we'll put God first in our life, he will bless the rest. And and this is what scripture is saying. See, when I first started tithing, I can tell you this. I was newly saved, and what I was wanting to do with my whole heart is to follow God with everything within me, and I was making adjustments and changes, in my, and God was doing awesome work in me, and I just wanted to follow him, a desire to, to, to live my life out, just boldly follow God. Came out of a really messed up time in my life, but God, just in these first few weeks of my salvation, was like, God, you know, I just give it all to you, and God did an awesome work. I remember... I was such a hard place. I was in debt, and I just didn't know how I was going to pay rent. 20 years old, had no idea how I was going to pay rent. I said, you know what, God? I've been going to church for these past few weeks. My pastor taught about the tithing. I'm like, oh my goodness, 10%? That's crazy. <laughs> I said, you know what, God? I'm going to live for you. I'm going to test you in this. And I did. It wasn't necessarily easy at first. My rent did get paid, but I'll tell you what happened. God did bless me. What happened in the weeks coming was this. First of all, I got a promotion in my job, and that was a blessing, wasn't it? <laughs> I was able to pay my rent after that. And then what, ha- what happened also was that, that this, this bill, this credit card bill that I had that I wanted to pay off, I just didn't have the money to, got sent to a house that I used to live in. And the person who was living there opened it up by accident, and they called me and said, hey, uh, just explaining what they had done, and just really apologetic. And they said, you know what? We're going to take care of this for you. I'm like, oh, my goodness. <laughs> I believe it's because I was honoring God, and I took this step of faith, and he was showing himself strong in my life. See, a tithe is a powerful principle. Is it always easy? Not always. But always, I'd rather have 90% blessed by God than 100% that's not. Deuteronomy 14, 23 says this. It says, it says this in, the, new, in, the, in the, the Living Bible. It says, the purpose of tithing is to teach you to always put God first in your lives. The purpose of tithing. Some of you are like, man, I didn't read the fine print when I became a Christian, I guess. Because uh, my money, you know, 10%. <laughs> <laughs> and I probably, probably picked the wrong Sunday to come to church. <laughs> I told God I'd give him my life, but not my money. You know, this is a funny story. Back in the Crusades, did you know this is something that they did often? Was um, when, the, when they're sending a crusader out into the war, whether it's right or wrong, this is not the, the conversation that we're going to be having. But what they used to do is the, the, the crusader used to go to the priest and they'd baptize the crusader to have his blessing, whatever that meant, to go out and fight the war. <laughs> But what also, often what would the, the crusader would do is they would get baptized by the priest and actually go underwater, but he would hold the sword out of the water to say, God, I give all of you to me except for this. I want control of this. And often there's that one thing that we're not willing to give to God, and often it has to do with our money. But many of us here today, we desire to put God first. We desire to say, God, I want to give all of myself to you. I want to follow you wholeheartedly. You see, the tithe teaches us, first of all, to prioritize our lives around God. To prioritize our lives before God and around God. And it's a constant reminder. It's an act of worship every single time we do this. We say, God, this is, a, this is a, a tangible way where I can show you that, that you are first in my life. And it's an act of obedience. You said, bring all the tithes into the storehouse so there may be food in my house. And I'm doing this, Lord, as an act of worship, trusting you, Lord. You said to, to test you in this. And this is what I'm doing this week. Secondly, also teaches us an abundant mindset. Teaches us to trust God and to have an abundance mindset. Because what it does, it it helps us, it helps build our faith to trust God. Saying, God, I'm trusting you with my life. I'm trusting you with my finances, Lord. I'm trusting you to provide for all my needs. I'll tell you, that's what God has done in my life. He's he's caused me and taught me to to trust him in this area of finances. Secondly, what he does, let me tell you this. To unlock blessing, the key to unlock blessing in your life is this, it's obedience. The key to unlocking blessing is obedience. Not just talking about any area in your life 
we want God's blessing, we must walk in obedience to Him. Secondly, we've got to plan our generosity. When we buy something, you know, when we buy something, I mean, we, we look in the paper, we look online, we try to get the best prices, and we, we, go to, we go to Best Buy, and we try to check things out, and then we go over to another store, and we see, hey, well, how does that compare to this? And we, when, we, when, we, when we buy a car, we go to this dealership, we compare prices, and we, we compare products, and we want to get the best product for our money, and we, we plan out our purchases, and we plan out how we're going to consume, but why don't we plan out how we give? Isaiah 32, 8 says, but generous people plan to do what is generous, and they stand firm in their generosity. They, they find a way to give, and what a radical thing to, to actually say, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look for ways to give, because it's more blessed to give than it is to receive. I'm going to look for ways to be a blessing to this world around me. I'm going to plan out my giving. When I do my budget every month, I'm going to plan out how I'm going to be a blessing. Amen? Amen. 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 Thirdly, I want to tell you, first of all, you know, it's like, I think about what's the, about people planning out giving in the Bible. People are giving extravagant gifts to God because, you know, like, like I think of Solomon who gave a thousand bulls as a sacrifice, as an offering to God. Because, you know, he could have given 10 bulls, he could have given 100 bulls, but he gave 1,000 bulls because that was, that, that was a, a sacrifice for him and that was, a, that was an offering for him. But then you, on the other hand, you have the widow who threw in two mites. She gave all that she had. Because, see, giving isn't about, an offering is not about how much we give as much as it is how much we keep. And, see, God sees our heart. Thirdly, we've got to start being generous now. Philemon Philemon 4, 1, 6 says this, And I am praying that you will put into action the generosity that comes from your faith as you understand and experience all the good things we have in Christ. See, it's tempting to say, when I make more money, I'm going to be generous. When I, when I, when I make more money, I'm going, to, I'm, going to, I'm going to start giving. It's tempting to do that, and I challenge you to be generous now. I challenge you, why, why wait till later when you have a need now? When, may, later on, you may not need the same blessing from God that you need right now. You may not need God to provide for your needs then like you need him to meet your needs right now. We need our money blessed. And how do we do that? We honor God in our finances. Might be saying, I'll put God to the test later. But I challenge you to start giving offerings to the Lord, like start tithing to God. And when you give, you will be a blessing. When you give, you will be blessed. I'm going to have the worship team come up. And today I want to give you an opportunity to to respond to this message. First and foremost, the most important thing is your relationship with God. See, we serve a God who is a giver. And the most important story of giving, the most, the most generous thing that ever happened in the world is when God sent his son, Jesus, his one and only son, to die for us. When he gave his son, the Bible says that, that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but should have everlasting life. And today, as your head is bowed and your eyes are closed, I want to ask you this. Have you experienced the greatest gift to humanity? Have you experienced the gift of his son, Jesus Christ? Have you experienced the gift of salvation? The most generous act that ever happened in the history of humanity is the giving of his son, Jesus Christ. He gave his son, Jesus, to us. He, he came to earth. He lived as a man. He was fully man and fully God. He came for the sole purpose to die for our sins. And it's our sin that separates us from God. 
And he bore all of our sins on the cross so that you and I can have perfect relationship with God. Maybe you're here today, you've never experienced salvation, you've never experienced the forgiveness of sins, you've you've never decided to be a follower of Jesus Christ, and today what I want to do, I want to give you the opportunity to, to, to make him the Lord of your life, say, Jesus, forgive me of my sin, make me clean, make me new, forgive me, I want to follow you all the days of my life, and if that's you, I want you to raise your hand right now, put it up, yes, 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 yes. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And if you'll just pray like this, Lord, forgive me of my sin. I give my life to you. I turn from my old ways and I turn to a life in Christ. Make me new. Make me clean. I believe that you you died on the cross and that three days later you rose from the dead. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Brothers, you want to respond to this message, give you an opportunity. An opportunity to respond. I want to give you this challenge. Malachi 3.10 says this, to bring all the tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. And he says, test me in this says the Lord God Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out such a blessing that there will not even be room enough to store it. This is the only time that God has asked us to put him to the test. Maybe you're here today and you're saying, you know, I I don't tithe, but God has been speaking to my heart and I believe that it's time to move into this, this step of obedience, this step of faith. I want to make this commitment. And what I want you to do is I want you to pull out your connection card and look on the back. If everyone pull out their connection card, you'll see there that it'll say that I'm, I'm accepting the 90-day the challenge. What, I'll, I will, I, what we're going to do here today, because I believe in this principle so much, I believe that if we test him, that God will bless us and God will see the blessing of God in our life. You'll turn it over. If you'll commit to tithing for 90 days, consistently, 10% of your income. If you do not see the blessing of God, we will give your money back. That's how much I believe in this. That's how much I believe that God will release his blessing into your life. So if God's leading you to do that, if you feel that, that God's blessing, that, that God wants you to do this, what we're going to do is you, you, you put that in the, in, the, in the offering bucket. We're going to send you this, this book as a way of encouragement. And um, to learn more about God's blessing, about the principle, the treasure principle by Andy Alcorn that will go in the mail this week. Maybe you're here today and you're like, you know, I already tithe, but I feel like God is, God is just, just moving me to, to actually give more. And, if, and I want to commit to be, becoming a generous giver. I'm not doing this so that we can like be, be gimmicky, but I want to resource you because this, for some of you, this is a really, really huge step of faith. And I want it to help you to grow. We're going to encourage you in this. If you want to be a generous giver, we're going to give you this resource as well. It's called The Blessed Life by Robert Morris. And we can grow in our walk with God. We'll grow in our, our generosity. We want to help you. And we want to be able to see you experience the blessing of God. So if you'll, you'll fill that out and um, put that in the offering bucket as um, you leave these, these curtains today, um, we know that you will be blessed. So, Father, today we thank you for this opportunity we have to worship you. We thank you for the blessings of giving. I thank you for this opportunity that we're able to dig into your word and and see the truth of your word. And we thank you that you give us opportunities where you can bless us. And, Lord, our desire is to honor you. Our desire is to follow you with our whole heart today. And we worship you and we thank you. In Jesus' name.